Let's answer a million dollar question. How to clear ISTQB exam in the first attempt? Let me tell you this straightforward. ISTQB exam is not difficult, but tricky. Questions are asked in the way that you get confused. This is the success rate graph from the ISTQB official website. And you can see that only 74% of the people could clear the ISTQB foundation level exam in their first attempt. So you must know what approach you should follow to clear the exam. I suggest this approach based on our experience. Step 1. Watch the video lecture. Step 2. Read the corresponding topic in the ISTQB official PDF. Step 3. Solve the quiz so you understand the types of questions asked previously. Step 4. If the topic is of type K3, solve as many practice questions as possible. We have provided many such questions in our course. Step 5. Solve the master quiz provided at the end of each chapter. I guarantee you that you will get similar questions in the exam. Follow these five steps for sure and you will clear the exam. And yes, for any doubt, reach us directly. Our experts will help you throughout your preparation. So all the best for your ISTQB exam. After black box testing, now we will see white box testing. We have three learning objectives under this topic. Explain statement coverage. Explain decision coverage. Explain the value of statement and decision coverage. And they all are marked as K2. Let's see the definition of white box testing. White box testing is based on an analysis of the architecture, detailed design, internal structure, or the code of the test object, and it concentrates on the structure and processing within the test object. Here you can see we care more about the internal structure of the code. White box testing discussed in this syllabus are of two types, statement coverage and decision coverage. Again, this topic will be explained by our experienced test manager. You will be able to hear me again with the experience-based testing. Until then, bye-bye. In this lecture, we will see the basic symbols used in flowchart. We will use these symbols to draw the flowchart. We use rectangle or a square shape to represent the statements in the code. This symbol is used to represent the decisions in the code. And the edges are represented by the arrows. While solving the question, you will understand how to use it. For the time being, just remember these symbols. Now have a look into this flowchart and find out how many statements, decision, and edges are present in this flowchart. Pause the video and find the answer. In the flowchart, we have five statements, two decisions, and seven edges. In the upcoming lectures, we will solve statement and decision coverage based questions. Here, the question is, given the following fragment of code, how many tests are required for 100% decision coverage? This is the code which we need to analyze, and then we have to select the correct option from these options. Let's first analyze the code and parallelly draw the flowchart to get the answer. First line is, if width is greater than length. Now let's draw the flowchart for it. Since it is a condition, we have represented like this. Second and third line is, then, biggest dimension equals to width. That means, if this condition is correct, biggest dimension equals to width. Since it is a statement, we have to represent it like this. Now let's analyze line 4. 
If height is greater than width, we have to continue with the same branch. And since it is a condition, we have represented like this. Now let's analyze fifth and sixth line. Then biggest dimension equals to height. That means if this condition is correct, biggest dimension equals to height. Until now, we analyzed first six line of the code. Now the seventh, eighth, and ninth lines are important. Listen to me carefully. In the seventh line, we have end if. This is the end of if statement in fourth line. For your benefit, I am repeating it again. End if on the seventh line is the end of if statement in fourth line. Now, if you see between if and end if, there is no else statement. That means if the condition becomes false, we don't have to do anything. Now let's see how to represent it in flowchart. Since nothing is mentioned, we just have to put a line for a false statement. That means if the condition is true, we will follow this path. If the statement becomes false, we have to follow this path. This part of the code is very important. Many do mistake here. They forget to consider this false part. Now let's consider line number 8 and 9. The else on the 8th line is for condition on line 1. Because this if condition is not yet close. Now let's see where to put it in the flowchart. If this condition is false, biggest dimension equals to length. Now let's focus on line number 10. If height is greater than length, this is a condition so we have to represent it like this in flowchart. Now let's see line number 11 and 12. Then biggest dimension equals to height. In flowchart, we have to represent it like this. Now let's focus on line 13. Line 13 is end if. This end if is for condition in line 10. And again, since there is not else statement in between, we don't have to do anything. And this is how we have to represent it on the flowchart. Now let's focus on the last line, which is end if. This end if is for the first condition. So this is the place where first condition ends. Now let's move to the flowchart. This is how we have to draw the flowchart. Now, using this flowchart, we have to find out how many tests are required for 100% decision coverage. To cover 100% decision coverage, we have to cover both the paths. True path and false path. These are the four tests cases we need to cover all the branches. Therefore, the answer is 4 for this question. Here the question is, you have designed test cases to provide 100% statement and 100% decision coverage for the following fragment of code. That means for this code, test case is available and that test case covers 100% statement coverage and decision coverage. To this code, the following has been added to the bottom of the code fragment above. Now we have to find 
How many more test cases are required? Let's understand this question clearly. Initially, we had this code. And for this code, we had test cases to cover statement coverage and decision coverage. After that, new code was added. And now we have to find if we need test cases to cover this new piece of code. If yes, then how many new test cases we need? These are the options. A. One more test case will be required for 100% decision coverage. B. Two more test cases will be required for 100% statement coverage, one of which will be used to provide 100% decision coverage. C. None. Existing test cases can be used. D. One more test case will be required for 100 statement coverage. First, we will analyze the code and draw flowchart for it. Line number one is a condition. If width is greater than length, we represent condition like this in the flowchart. Now let's see line number two and three. Then, biggest dimension equals two width. Since it is a statement, we have to represent it like this. That means, if this condition is true, this branch will be executed. Now let's analyze line number 4 and 5, which is else biggest dimension equals length. This is how we have to represent it in flowchart. Else means if the condition becomes false, this statement will execute. And the sixth line is end if. That means condition on line number one ends here. This is how we have to draw the flowchart. Now, as per the question, the test cases are already available. But in the test case, it's not mentioned how many test cases are required for 100% statement coverage and decision coverage. So before adding the code, we have to find the number of test cases. It's clear that with two test cases, we can cover both statements and both conditions too. Now let's add the new code at the end. You can see that all these are statement. We can represent these statements like this in the flowchart. If you run the existing test case, new code will be covered with it. That means we don't have to write any new test cases to cover new code. That is why option B is the answer. Here the question is, the diagram represents the following paths through the code. What is the minimum combination of paths required to provide full statement coverage? Here the flowchart is already given. And in this flowchart, the paths are marked as V, X, Z, W, and Y and A, B, C, and D represents different path combination. And as per the question, we have to find out with which combination we can cover full statement coverage. Let's first see option A. In option A, we have only one combination, which is A. And A combination covers path V, W, and Y. Now we have to find V, W, and Y on the flowchart. This is the path on flowchart. With this path, we can cover all the statements. These are the three statements in the graph and all are covered with this combination. So this is our answer. Option A is the answer. You can try with other options.
Here the question is, how many test cases are needed to achieve 100% statement coverage? These are the options. Now let's analyze the code and draw the flowchart. First line is a condition. If temperature is less than 0 or temperature is greater than 100. And the flowchart looks like this. If this condition is true, then third statement alert danger will be executed. This is how we can draw the flowchart for it. Now let's move to the fourth line. If speed is greater than 100 and load is less than equal to 50, now the question is where to place this condition in the flowchart. Since the condition on line 1 is not yet ended, we have to put this condition under the same branch, like this in the flowchart. Now let's move to line number 5 and 6. Line 6 is speed equals to 50. Since it is a statement, we can put it here. Now let's analyze line number 7. It's important. At line 7, we have closing bracket. This closing bracket is for opening bracket at line number 5. That means the fourth condition ends here. But since there is no else part for this condition, we have to do nothing. And this is how it is represented in the flowchart. Now let's analyze line number 8, 9, 10, and 11. At line number 8, we have closing bracket. This closing bracket is for opening bracket at line number 2. At line 8, the condition at line number 1 ends. And along with that, we have a else statement. That means if condition 1 fails, we have to execute line 10. Check equals false. In flowchart, this is how we have to represent it. If condition is true, we will follow this path and if condition is false, we will follow this path. At line number 11, the else path ends. And this is how we have to represent it in flowchart. Now, the flowchart is complete. Now let's use this flowchart to find the correct answer. As per the question, we have to achieve 100% statement coverage. Since we have statements in these two paths, we need to test cases to cover these statements. So that means we need only two test cases. Option D is the answer. In this question, the piece of code is provided. And then these options are provided. Here, we need to find out how many test cases are required to cover statement coverage and branch coverage. To do that, let's first analyze the code and draw the flowchart. Here line number 1, switch PC on. And line number 2, start outlook are statements. We can represent them like this in the flowchart. Now let's see line number 3. If outlook appears, this is a condition. And we can represent it like this in a flowchart. Since it is a condition, we shall get minimum two outcomes. If line number three is true, then send an email, which is line number four and five. And we can represent it like this. Before going to next line, we have to understand an important concept here. Since line number four is then, and we don't have any starting bracket here, only one statement after it will be executed when the condition becomes true. Let me repeat it again. Because after then, there is no start bracket, as per the coding rule, only one statement after it will be executed in the same branch. 
Now let's see how to represent it in the flowchart for more clarity. Here, only one statement is executing if condition becomes true. Since there is no else part in the code, nothing happens when the condition fails. And we have to show it like this. And line number 6 is close outlook. And it will be represented like this in the flowchart. So this is how we have to draw the flowchart. Now let's find the correct answer. First, we have to find how many test cases are required to cover statement coverage. Here we have these three statements. And to cover them, we only need one test case. Next, we have to find how many test cases are required branch coverage. Do not get confused with the term branch coverage. Condition coverage and branch coverage are the same. Here we have two conditions, and to cover it, we need two test cases. That means option B is the correct answer. One test for statement coverage. Two for branch coverage. In this question, the piece of code is provided, and then these options are provided. Here we need to find out how many test cases are required to cover statement coverage and branch coverage. To do that, Let's first analyze the code and draw the flowchart. The first line is, if A is greater than B. Since this is a condition, we have to represent it like this. Second and third line is, then C equals to A minus B. This will execute when condition becomes true. So it will be placed like this in flowchart. Now let's see line number 4 and 5. Else, C equals to A plus B. This statement will be executed when condition in line number 1 fails. So, it will be placed like this in the flowchart. Now, the line number 6 is important, which is, and if. And if is used to terminate the if statement. And this is how it is represented in the flowchart. The first condition ends here. Line number 7, read D, is a statement. And it is represented like this. Line number 8 is a condition. If C is greater than D, condition is represented like this on a flowchart. Since this is a condition, we should get minimum two outcomes. If the condition is true, line number 9, print error will be executed. This is how we need to draw flowchart for it. Since the else part is not mentioned in the code, if condition fails, we should not do anything. And this is how we show it in the flowchart. With this, the second condition ends. Now the flowchart is ready for analysis. We have to find number of test cases required to cover statement coverage and branch coverage. Let's first find the number of test cases required for statement coverage. With this path, we can cover three statements. But one statement is not covered, so we need one more test case to cover it. That means we need two test cases to cover statement coverage. And we can see that with the two test case, we can cover all the branches too. That's why option B is correct. Two tests for statement coverage, two for branch coverage. In this question, we have to find how many test cases are needed to achieve 100% decision coverage. And then these options are provided. To do that, let's first analyze the code and draw the flowchart. First line is, if P equals to Q. Since this is a condition, 
we will represent it like this. Line number 2 is s equals to s plus 1. Since it is a statement, we can place it like this. Line number 3 is if a is less than s. It is a condition, so we will draw a flowchart like this. Line number 4 is t equals to 10, which is a statement. So it will be represented like this. Now pay your attention on line number 6. It is very important. Here we have a closing bracket, a condition, and an opening bracket. The closing bracket is for condition in line number 1. What it means is, if condition 1 is true, all the lines with in it will be executed. So now it is very important that we close the condition in line number 3 properly before going with the else part of this code. And this is how we have to close this condition. If condition is true, execute this statement. If condition is false, do nothing. With this, the condition on line number 3 is closed. Now, if first condition is true, we will execute this path. But if the condition is false, we need to execute this condition. And if this condition is true, line number 7 will be executed. And it will be represented like this. So we will execute this path if condition is true. And if condition is false, we have to do nothing. So this is how we can close this condition. And finally, code will end. This is the complete flowchart of this code. Now let's analyze to get the correct answer. Here we have to find number of test cases required to cover 100% condition coverage. And to do that, we have to execute these four test cases. That means option D, 4, is the answer. Here, the question is, what is the smallest number of test cases required to provide 100% branch coverage? And then these options are provided. To do that, let's first analyze the code and draw the flowchart. First line is, if x is greater than y, and x equals x plus 1. Here we have condition and statement together. If x is greater than y is the condition. And x equals x plus 1 is a statement. And this statement will execute when condition becomes true. This is how we have to represent line number 1 in flowchart. Now let's analyze line number 2. Else, y equals y plus 1. That means, if the condition becomes false, this statement will execute. And we have to represent it like this. Before going to the third line, we must close this condition, because both true and false paths are executed. And this is how we have to close the if statement. So, for first two lines, we have to draw a flowchart like this. Now let's analyze 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th line together. 3rd line is a while loop. While loop is nothing but a condition, which executes continuously if condition is true. And if condition is false, it stops execution. For finding statement coverage and branch, we can just represent it like a normal condition, as shown here. And if the condition is true, fifth line will execute, which will be placed here in the flowchart. And if the condition fails, we have to terminate the while loop, and it can be shown like this. 
With this, the flowchart is complete. Now, as per the question, we have to find number of test cases for 100% branch coverage. With this test case, we can cover the true branch, and with this test case, we can cover false branch. That means with two test cases, we can cover 100% branch coverage. Therefore, answer B2 is the answer. Here the question is, this part of a program is given. While condition A, do B, and while. And then these options are provided. Let's first analyze the code and draw the flowchart. Line 1 is while condition. While condition A, for finding statement coverage or branch coverage, we can use while loop as a normal condition in the flowchart, like this. And if the condition is true, line number 2 will be executed. That is, do b, which we can represent like this in the flowchart. And last line is end while, which can be represented like this in flowchart. With this, the flowchart is ready. Now the question is, how many paths should be tested in this code in order to achieve 100% path coverage? Here we have two paths, so we can use two test cases to cover 100% path coverage. Therefore, answer is B, 2. Here the question is, given the following sample of pseudocode, what is the minimum number of test cases required to guarantee 100% decision coverage? And then these options are provided. Now let's analyze the pseudocode and draw a flowchart to get the correct answer. The first line is, input exam score. This is a statement. So we can represent it like this. Line 2 is, if exam score is less than equal to 75. This is a condition, so we can represent it like this. If this condition becomes true, line number 3, print candidate has failed will execute. Since it is a statement, we can draw it like this. The fourth and fifth line is, else print candidate has passed. These two lines will execute if the condition on line number 2 fails. Since line number 5 is a statement, we can represent it like this. Now let's analyze line number 6, which is if exam score greater than equal to 120. It is a condition, but the question is where to place this condition on the flowchart. To answer this, you have to look into condition on line number 2. This condition is not yet ended, so we have to place this condition inside the else condition itself. This is how we have to place it in flowchart. Line number 7 is, print, candidate has achieved a distinction. It is a statement, so we can place it like this. Line number 8 and 9 are end if. That means both the condition ends here, and this is how we can close the flowchart. With this, the flowchart is ready. Now let's use it to solve the question. In the question, we have to find the minimum number of test cases required to guarantee 100% decision coverage. That means we have to cover all the decisions. With these three test cases, we can cover all the decisions. Therefore, option C, 3, is the answer. Here the question is, 
One of the test goals for the project is to have 100% decision coverage. The following three tests have been executed for the control flow graph shown below. Which of the following statements related to the decision coverage goal is correct? And then these options are provided. Now let's analyze the three test cases to get the correct answer. Test A covers path. A, B, D, E, G. This in the path in flowchart covered by test case A. If we see here one part of the A, D, and E is covered with this test case. Now let's see the second test. Test B covers path A, B, D, E, F, G. This is the path covered by test B in flowchart. Now still one part of the A and D is not covered. But now both parts of the E is covered. Now let's analyze the last test. Test C covers path A, C, F, C, F, C, F, G. In flowchart, this is the path covered by test C. Now, both parts of the A is covered. Both parts of F is covered. But still, both parts of the D is not covered. That means, option A is the answer. Decision D has not been tested completely. Here, the question is, given the following program fragment, this is the fragment. What is the minimum number of test cases needed to achieve 100% statement coverage? And then these options are provided. Now let's analyze the code and draw a flowchart to get the answer. The first line is, if day equals to Monday, since it is a condition, we have to represent it like this on flowchart. If condition on line 1 is true, line 2, then statement A will execute. Since it is a statement, we can represent it like this. If the condition on line number 1 fails, else part will execute. That means line number 4 Statement B will execute. Since it is a statement, we can represent it like this. The fifth line is end if. This end if is for condition on line number one. And this is how we have to represent it on the flowchart. The sixth line is day equals to Tuesday. Since it is a condition, we have to represent it like this on flowchart. If condition on line 6 is true, line 7, then statement C will execute. Since it is a statement, we can represent it like this. The eighth line is end if. The end if is for condition on line number 6. And this is how we have to represent it on flowchart. With this, the flowchart is complete. Now let's analyze the flowchart to get the answer. As per the question, we have to find statement coverage. Since the statement are present in two different branches, we need two test cases to cover 100% statement coverage. Therefore, option B2 is the answer. Here the question is, evaluate the following control flow diagram and determine the statement coverage and decision coverage resulting from the execution of the following test cases. And then these options are provided.
Now let's analyze the flowchart to get the answer. Based on the test case, first we will find the statement coverage. Test 1 is A, B, D, E, F. With this test case, we can cover this path. And second test is A, B, C. With this, we can cover this path. Now, all the statements are covered, so we can say with two test case, 100% statement coverage is achieved. Now, based on the same test case, we will find decision coverage. Any circle which has two outcomes are decisions. For example, circle B and circle D are the decisions. Let's first analyze circle B. Here, outcome B to C is covered, and outcome B to D is covered. That means both the conditions are covered. Now let's analyze circle D. Here, outcome D to E is covered, but outcome D to A is not covered. That means one condition is covered and one is not covered. Now let's calculate the decision coverage. For that, we need number of decisions covered and total number of decisions. Here, number of decision covered is 3. Two conditions are covered for circle B and one condition covered for circle D. And total number of conditions are 4. Percentage of decision coverage is number of decisions covered divided by total number of decisions multiplied by 100. Due answer is 75%. Option C, 100% statement, 75% decision is the answer.